Welcome back everyone. Uh, the first exam soft video we looked at how to create folders in which to put your questions. The second video we looked at how to create a basic multiple choice question. And today we're going to look at creating some of the more advanced questions. Specifically I want to focus on creating fill in the blank questions and matching columns. So to do that um, the first thing you do as we did last time is just drag your mouse over the folder in which you want to create the question. Since the question I'm going to be creating is a little bit more general today, I'm going to drag over the unit title and then I'm going to click on create new question. Now instead of clicking on multiple choice, I'm going to do fill in the blank. You can see you can also create essay and true false questions. Those are actually pretty self-explanatory, so I'm really going to focus specifically on fill in the blank and matching today. You're going to be given an empty box just like last time. Um, all you really have to do to start is to write out your fill-in-the-blank question. So I'm going to say the poem and then put a blank compares America to a mother seated in the adamant of time. Okay, so now that you've written out the line that has the fill-in-the-blank in it, what you want to do is click right next to the blank. Only after you've clicked right next to the blank should you click on add a new blank. What that's going to now allow you to do is place next to number one, you can see the corresponding one up here, but you'll place next to number one whatever the answer is to the question. So I'm going to put America. I'm going to be careful to spell it correctly. Now if they put America, it'll register as the correct answer. Caps do, do not matter. So if they capitalize or they don't capitalize any of the letters, they'll still get full credit, which is a great feature. Let's say, though, you want to accept two different answers in the blank. What you can do is add this pipe key. The pipe key is very rarely used, but if you hit shift and then hit the key right above enter return, it'll drop this pipe. And now right next to it, you can put in alternative answers. So here I'm going to put America in quotes because really they should quote a poem. So if they put America with or without the quotes, they'll get full credit for this particular question. So that's how you make a basic fill-in-the-blank question. I would then go through the title, group, etc. as we did last time. And then, of course, when you were done with all of that, you would click on Approve, and that would enter the question into the system. I'm actually not going to do that right now because I'd like to take a moment instead to just show you within this same template how to create a matching column. So I'm going to delete everything for now, hit an X next to this option just so I start with a clean slate. Okay, now to start the matching column, what you want to do is put all of the answers up top, kind of like your answer key. Um, to keep that organized, I like to click on this feature, which is your table feature, and then put the number of rows, which is going to be two, and the number of columns, which is going to be three, and I'm going to click OK. Now you'll just put each of your options in. So this is just going to be an author matching column for me. So I'm going to put Emerson and then I'm going to put Gast. Okay, now that you've made your answer key, the next thing to do is type in your questions that correspond with that key. For me, since it's just an author's matching column, I'm going to put in each of the pieces that we covered in this unit. So I'm going to start by putting America. And what I want you to notice is I'm purposefully not putting numbers. We'll get to that later. Next I'll put uh, true Americanism, um, and they'll keep going from there. Okay, once you have everything entered, all of the questions that you want to correspond to the matching, what you want to do next is one at a time, you're going to place your cursor to the left of the question. So I'm going to start with America. Then I'm going to click Add New Blank. And what that's going to do is it's going to put a number one right next to America, and right down here you'll have your corresponding one to the correct answer. So now what I want the correct answer to be for America is the letter of the author. So in this case, Whitman wrote America, so I want to put right here in correct answer, D. And that's all I have to do. The next thing you want to do is click to the left of true Americanism, and then I'm going to click add new blank. That's going to put a 2 there, and it's also going to give me a 2 blank. And this time this one was written by Roosevelt, so I'm going to put A, B and the students will have to do the same. Then I'll move down to Declaration of Independence, etc. Okay, so now I went through and I labeled everything appropriately, but there are a couple things I wanna show you that I did 
um, in the interim. First, I put directions up here. This is a good idea. So I say place the letter and only the letter of the corresponding author in the provided blank. This will make sure that students know just to put the letter and not the full name of the author. The next thing I want to show you is what to do if you mess something up. Um, and I know I messed a few things up here. I put, as you can see, true Americanism twice as question two and question seven. And I also have it as two and seven down here. So what I want to do is delete my second one. So I'm going to go ahead and just highlight and delete true Americanism. You'll see that leaves the seven. You also actually have to delete number seven and then delete. I'll also want to delete the corresponding number seven down here by clicking the X. And what that will do is automatically make my last one number seven. That'll be like my new number seven, which, which is nice that it does that automatically. Okay, so now the hard part is over as far as this matching column goes. Uh, the last thing to do is just make sure it has a proper title and wait. So I'm um, just going to put matching so I can easily find it later on. So it's going to be matching intro to American authors. Um, and then I'm going to put the group. I'm going to put intro to American literature so that it sorts with any of that question type later on. I'm going to leave category blank for now. And when it comes to matching columns, this next step is really important. So you could see that I have seven questions within this matching column. I want this to then be worth seven points. So in wait, I'm going to change it from 1.0 to 7.0. And then over here, very importantly, I have to allow partial credit. Because if I don't and they get one part of the matching column wrong, they'll get the whole matching column wrong, which defeats the purpose. I'm not going to drag and drop anything for now. I don't need rationale or internal comments. So now that this looks complete and everything is good, I'm going to click Approve. Remember, not Save, but Approve. And that will publish the question and make it available for use. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned next time for actually how to make assessments using all the questions that you create.